Welcome back. Let's start with this example. We have the integral of 3x squared times the quantity x cubed minus 8 to the ninth power dx. And so if we're going to integrate this using u substitution, the first thing that we need to figure out is what we are going to set u equal to. And when you're trying to figure out what to set u equal to, you want to ask yourself in your integral, do you see a function and its derivative? If you do, you want to set that function equal to u. And so let's look at our integral here. We have two potential choices for u. We have 3x squared and x cubed minus 8. And so if we start by looking at our 3x squared term, if we were to take the derivative of that function, let's say we had d dx of 3x squared, that would be equal to 2 times 3, so you'd have 6, times x to the first power, right? We would subtract 1 from our exponent, and so we'd have 6x. And so I don't see a 6x anywhere in this integral. And so 3x squared is not going to be a good choice for what we're going to set u equal to. So instead, that must mean that 3x squared minus 8 is going to be our choice here. And it's a good choice because when you take the derivative of a cubic function, you are going to get a squared function. That's the key here. You want to find a function, this one right here, whose derivative can also be found somewhere else in your integral. And so we'll set u equal to x cubed minus 8, and then we'll take the derivative of that. So we'll have du divided by dx, and that will be equal to 3x squared, right? We multiply 3 down and subtract 1 from the exponent, so we'll have 3x squared. And then that's it because the derivative of negative 8 is just 0 since negative 8 is a constant. And so then if we multiply both sides by dx and solve for du, we'll have that du is equal to 3x squared dx. And so now notice that 3x squared dx can be found in our integral here. We have 3x squared and dx. And so we can replace those two terms with du and replace x cubed minus 8 with u. And then our entire integral will be rewritten in terms of u. There will no longer be any x's in that integral, which is what we want to do. That is the goal here. And so this will be equal to the integral of u to the ninth power times du, right? We replaced this with u and replaced these two terms with du because they are equal. And in case that doesn't make sense, another way you could do this is to solve directly for dx. So you would have another step after this and so if you divided both sides by 3x squared and you'd be solving for dx, you would have that du divided by 3x squared is equal to dx. And then you could plug this in for dx in your integral. And so watch what happens if we were to do this. This would be equal to the integral of 3x squared times, we're still going to change this with u. So we're going to have x cubed minus 8 is equal to u. So we'll have u to the power of 9. And then we're going to be multiplying by what dx is equal to. So we'll have du divided by 3x squared. And so then notice that these 3x squareds would cancel out, and so you'd be left with the same thing. We would have u to the ninth power du. And so either way that you do this, you're going to get the same integral. I just wanted to show you this method so you can see a different way of what is happening here to try and help you understand the process of u substitution. But if we erase that work, and we go back to solving our integral here. This will be equal to using the power rule of integration on u to the ninth power. So we'll add one to the exponent, so we'll have u to the 10th power, and then we'll divide by that exponent, 10. And then we have plus c. And so then, we're almost done. Now that we have integrated our integral with respect to u, we can now replace u with what we set it equal to. We will substitute back u with our function defined with x. And so this will be equal to 1 tenth. I'm just going to pull that 1 tenth to the outside. And then we'll have x cubed minus 8 to the 10th power plus c. And so that would be the answer to this integral. And if you're not convinced, if you're not sure if this is really the right answer to this integral, you can always take the derivative of your answer. And if that derivative is what is in your integral, then you know that your answer is correct. And of course, if you were to go ahead and do that, just remember that the derivative of this function is going to require the chain rule because you have this composite function here. Okay, so I'm not going to show the checking process. But if you wanted to check your work, which would be very helpful to do on a quiz or an exam, you can take the derivative of your answer, and if that derivative matches the function in your integral, then you know you have the right answer. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have the integral of cosine x times sine to the sixth power of x dx. 
And so if it helps, let me rewrite this problem real quick. This is equal to the integral of cosine x times sine x to the sixth power dx. That is what this sine to the sixth power x is equal to. It's that sine function to the sixth power. And so then if we're going to solve this integral, we need to figure out what we're going to set u equal to. And a big indicator of what you should set u equal to is what function is inside another function, which in this case is sine. Because in this case, if we were looking for a function and its derivative, this could go both ways. We know that the derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So it's a little bit tricky, but if you're in a scenario like this, look for the function that is inside another function. Look for that composite function, and so in this case, we're gonna set u equal to sine x because sine x is inside another function, or this quantity to the sixth power, right? Sine is being taken to the sixth power, so we're gonna make that our value of u. And so if u is equal to sine x, then that means that du dx will be equal to cosine x. And if we multiply both sides by dx, we'll have that du is equal to cosine x dx. And so we have cosine dx in this integral right here. We have cosine and dx. And so we can replace those two terms with du. And then similarly, we can replace sine x with u. And so we'll have that this is equal to the integral of u to the sixth power times du. And so then our next step is going to be to integrate u to the sixth power. And so this will be equal to u to the power of seven divided by seven, right? We used the power rule for integration. We added one to our exponent to get seven and then divided by that exponent. And then we will add c. And so then all that's left is to replace u with what we set it equal to, which is sine x. And so this is equal to one seventh times sine x to the seventh power plus c. And of course you could rewrite this to be one seventh times sine to the seventh power x plus c. Either way it would be the right answer, but this one looks a little bit nicer. And so that would be the answer to this integral. Let's look at another example. All right, so for our next example, we have the integral of secant of two minus x times tangent of two minus x dx. All right, and so the first thing we wanna do is figure out what we're going to set u equal to. And so while it may seem like we have a few different options here, we really only have one good option, right? Because when you're picking what you wanna set equal to u, you wanna find a function and its derivative, and that function is what you wanna set equal to u. And so in this case, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and I don't see a secant squared anywhere in here, and the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. Now, while I see secant times tangent here, there needs to be another secant for that to work, right? We can't reuse the function that we are setting equal to u, right? So if we set u equal to this function, all we'd be left with is tangent of two minus x. So we can't use secant or tangent as our value of u. So our only option here is going to be two minus x. And that's going to work out very nicely because we have two of them and so we can replace both of these with u. And so we'll have that u is equal to two minus x. And if we take the derivative of that, we'll have du dx is equal to the derivative of two, which is zero because two is a constant, and then a derivative of negative x, which is negative one, because the derivative of a variable to the first power is just going to be equal to the coefficient or the constant being multiplied by that variable, which in this case is negative one. Right, and so then if we solve for du in this equation, we'll have that du is equal to negative dx. And so now if we compare this to what is in our integral here, we have dx, but it's not negative. And so we wanna divide that over to the other side so that what du is equal to is something that we can find in our integral. And so if we divide both sides by negative one, we'll have negative du is equal to dx. And so now we can replace dx in our integral here with negative du. And so now we're good to go. We picked a function to be equal to u and we found a term of du that is equal to dx. And so we can rewrite this to be the integral of secant of u times tangent of u times negative du right, dx is equal to negative du, and so that's what we replaced it with. And so if we take this negative to the outside of the integral, this will be equal to the negative integral of secant u times tangent u du. And we know that the integral of secant times tangent is secant, right? The derivative of secant is secant tangent. And so the opposite or the integral of secant tangent would be secant. That's one of our integration rules for trig functions. 
And so this will be equal to negative secant u plus c. And so now we only have one thing left to do, and that is to replace u with what we set it equal to, and that is 2 minus x. And so our final answer is that this is equal to negative secant of 2 minus x plus c. And that is the answer to this integral. All right, let's look at another example. All right, next we have the integral of x divided by the quantity x squared minus 1 cubed dx. And so for this problem, the first thing that we want to do to integrate it is figure out what our u is going to be equal to. And so in this case, we have two options. We have x and x squared minus 1. And so remember, whatever you pick, you want to make sure that its derivative is also found in this function. And in this case, I see x squared, and I know that if I take the derivative of x squared, I'm going to get x to the first power times some constant. And so what do I have up here? But x to the first power. And so that's going to work out perfectly. Let's set this function equal to u. So we'll have u equal to x squared minus 1, and we'll take the derivative, and we'll have that du dx is equal to 2x. Right, we multiply the exponent down to have 2, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so we just have x. And then, of course, the derivative of negative 1 is just 0, since it's a constant. And so now if we solve for du, we'll have that du is equal to 2x dx. And now we can compare this to what is in our function over here. Right, we know that this is equal to u, so we're going to have u to the third power in the denominator. But what are we replacing x and dx with? Well, we have du equal to 2x dx. But notice that that 2 is nowhere to be found in our integral. And so to compensate for that, we'll just divide this 2 over to the other side. So we'll have 1 half du is equal to x times dx, right? We divided both sides by 2. And now 1 half du is equal to x dx, which is in our integral, x and dx. And so we can replace those two terms with 1 half times du. And so this integral will be equal to 1 divided by u to the third power times 1 half du. Right, we replaced x squared minus 1 with u, so we have u to the third power, and then we replaced x and dx with 1 half du. And so we're just left with 1 in the numerator here, and then we have this times 1 half du. And so if we move this 1 half to the outside of the integral and rewrite this term to have u to the negative third power, right, we can move this to the numerator by making the exponent negative, and we'll have that this is equal to 1 half times the integral of u to the negative third power du. And so now we can take the integral of this function, and we'll have that this is equal to 1 half times u to the power of negative 2, right? We're adding 1 to our exponent, so negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. And then we'll divide by that exponent of negative 2, and then we'll add c. And so then if we simplify this a little bit, we'll multiply 1 half times this term, and then we'll move u to the negative 2 power back into the denominator so that that power is positive and not negative. And so this will be equal to negative 1 divided by 4 times u squared plus c. And so then all we have to do now is replace u with what we set it equal to, and we'll have that this is equal to negative 1 divided by 4 times x squared minus 1 squared plus c. And so that is the final answer to this integral. All right, so before we end this video, there's one more example that I want to look at. All right, so for our final example, we have the integral of sine of 4x divided by the square root of cosine of 4x dx. All right, so in order to integrate this, we first need to figure out what we're going to set u equal to. And we have two options here. We can either use sine of 4x or cosine of 4x. And so maybe you're thinking, well, what about 4x? Why wouldn't we want to use 4x for u? And that's because setting 4x equal to u wouldn't make this problem any easier to solve, right? We'd still have sine of some variable divided by the square root of cosine of some variable, which we don't know how to integrate using our basic rules. Right, so we need to use u substitution in a way that is going to help us integrate this function. So setting u equal to 4x is not going to help us there. And so that's why our only two options are cosine of 4x or sine of 4x. And so if we're going to pick one of these two functions to be equal to u, I'm going to lean towards using the function that is inside another function, right? Cosine of 4x is inside the square root function. And so I think that that's going to be my better option of what I should set equal to u. And so let's go with that. We'll have that u is equal to cosine of 4x. 
And so if we're going to take the derivative of this to find du, notice that we have a composite function here. We have cosine of 4x, and so we're going to need to use the chain rule to take this derivative. And so our outside function is cosine, and our inside function is 4x. And so if we take the derivative, we'll have du dx, we will start by taking the derivative of the outside function, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine, and we're going to keep that same inside function, but then we're going to multiply by the derivative of that inside function. And the derivative of 4x would just be 4, right? The derivative of a variable to the first power, such as x to the first power, is just going to be equal to the coefficient, or 4 in this case. And so if we multiply both sides by dx and solve for du, we'll have that du is equal to negative 4 times sine of 4x dx, right? I just moved this 4 to the front with that negative. And so now that we have what du is equal to, let's compare that to what is in our integral. I have negative 4 sine of 4x dx. In our integral, we just have sine of 4x dx. And so all that's different is this negative 4 right here. And so if we divide this negative 4 to the other side, we'll have negative 1 fourth times du, and that will be equal to sine of 4x dx. And so now we have a term with du that is equal to a function that we can find in our integral. And so now we can replace sine of 4x dx with negative 1 fourth du and replace cosine of 4x with u. And so this will be equal to the integral of 1 divided by the square root of u times negative 1 fourth du. And so we can rewrite this integral by rewriting the square root to the 1 half power. So we'd have u to the 1 half power. And then we can move that to the numerator by making that exponent negative. So we can use the power rule of integration. And then additionally, we'll pull this negative 1 fourth out to the front. So we'll have that this is equal to negative 1 fourth times the integral of u to the negative 1 half power du. Right, the square root of u is equal to u to the 1 half power, and then we just moved it up to the top by giving it a negative exponent. And so now we have an integral that we know how to solve. We can use the power rule for integration, and we'll have that this is equal to negative 1 fourth times u to the power of negative 1 half plus 1, which will be positive 1 half divided by positive 1 half, right? We're going to divide by that same power, and then plus c. And so dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So this will be equal to negative 1 fourth times 2 times u to the 1 half power. But we can replace u with cosine of 4x now. And we'll have the square root of cosine of 4x. Right, I just changed this 1 half power to be the square root and replaced u with what it's equal to. So we have the square root of cosine of 4x. And then, of course, don't forget your plus c. And then if we simplify this right here, negative 1 fourth times 2 is going to be negative 1 half. And so I'll rewrite that to be negative 1 half. And so that is the final answer to this integral. All right, so that was the last example problem I had for this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, this is all I had for now. So I will see you next time.